Hey everyone, welcome back to Great Sports Debates, and we have week 10 power rankings for everyone. So, let's get right into it. Starting at number 32, we have the Arizona Cardinals. Now, this is based on Clayton Toon at the starting quarterback. Doesn't look like they could really move the ball at all. Uh, this team's been pretty horrible. And it really comes down to them and the team at number 31, the Carolina Panthers. Again, this team just struggles to manufacture offense. You know, Bryce Young, you know, we're going to need a lot of improvement for him to be a quality starter. And maybe that's still possible, but he just doesn't look great now. Nor does the team, nor does its future with them shipping away their uh, first pick this year. They got smoked again. Uh, they don't look good. Um, they'll probably be back at the bottom uh, when Kyler Murray comes back for Arizona, which could be as soon as next week. At 30, it was the Giants. Uh, kicking myself, I didn't place the bet uh, I talked about for Raiders, uh, minus 2.5 or 3. But we still did pick them on the under. Uh, Giants uh, almost cost that trying to score some garbage points, but they weren't even good enough to do that. Uh, their offensive line is in shambles. It's going to be hard for the offense to do anything no matter what. And really the only bright spot is the occasional pressure from the defensive line, which really isn't consistent. At 29, at a similar level, is the uh, New England Patriots. They found a way to be competitive uh, again this weekend, but still lost. And at 28, uh, kind of a surprise, we got the LA Rams. But this is just going to be kind of where we have them as long as they're without Stafford. Because if you watch that game, Green Bay gave them plenty of opportunities to win the game. And the Packers just aren't good. But the Rams' offense was so inept. You know, Green Bay... <clears throat> eventually scored some points and wound up winning the game. At 27 is the Bears. Uh, Bajan makes too many mistakes again. The team's not good enough to really compete at a super high level. Uh, they're going to be one, one of the bottom teams, and there's not really any super strong point. Even uh, Moore, who I like, fumbled the ball today. So we got the Bears dropping down one spot to 27. At 26, it's the Green Bay Packers moving up a couple spots. Still don't think this team is great. Still think that they're going to lose most weeks. Still think Jordan Love makes too many mistakes. Uh, they can run the ball okay, and they don't have a whole lot beyond that. At 25 is the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, they realize they, they just really don't have any answers at quarterback. It makes it tough on the running game and everyone else. Uh, and Atlanta is going to continue to falter down the rest of the schedule. I think this is a team that's going to finish really weak. At 24, we got the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they're good enough to make you lose a bet here and there. And they typically don't shoot themselves in the foot too often. But again, this is a team with horrendous quarterback play. Not so great offensive line play, and nothing really to get excited about at all. Uh, they managed to keep the game close with uh, Pittsburgh, close enough that if you did tease it, uh, you were able to pull off the win. But again, they, they really are not a very impressive team at all. At 23, we're giving a little bit of love to the Raiders for everyone that says they keep underrating them. They had a, a breakout game. Uh, I think they're going to do better with Pierce as coach. Uh, he seemed to be smart enough to rely on the real strength of his team, which is hand off the ball to Josh Jacobs. Uh, try to ball control. Don't put the quarterback into too many situations or where they have to take too many chances and hopefully your defense can get some pressure and you can pull out a few games here and there. It'll be interesting to see where the Raiders go from here. At 22 it's the Denver Broncos. Uh, we dropped them down a couple of spots. 
Uh, nothing to do with any game action, obviously. Just kind of based on where the other teams moved up and moved down. At 21, uh, the Reds, uh, sorry, the Commanders take care of business. They slide up a couple of spots. Uh, Sam Howell looked pretty good. Again, he seems to have all, all the tools and things you'd want. He had a couple of beautiful deep throws, but for whatever reason, he's not super consistent. And they did trade away a couple of their good defensive line players. So I can't really see them moving up much further than this. But that's definitely a team that uh, can beat up on the bottom half of the league. At 20, we got Minnesota. Uh, I was surprised how well they did with out Kirk Cousins and uh, Josh Jobs stepping up on short notice. But, you know, as always, he brings that dual threat, which is great. Uh, he also brings fumbles and mistakes with him. So that's going to catch them at some points, too. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of connection he can make with uh, Justin Jefferson when he gets back. At 19th, Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, I thought they played a really good game against Houston. I mean, just C.J. Stroud was amazing again. But uh, Mayfield, you know, worked his connection with Mike Evans. And, you know, they played a really good game. At 18, I got the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, this is kind of a hard team to gauge. I got to watch a little bit of them today, but they were playing an inferior opponent. So, not too much to, to learn a game from that. But, if you look at what they've done all year, they've been able to put up points. Uh, despite, you know, Mitch, who is the quarterback. Um, they can kind of score with anybody. So, I think they'll be in a lot of games and they'll, they'll be a uh, tough team to beat. And at 17, it was kind of the uh, team that I was going back and forth with uh, Indy there. It's the New York Jets. But they're kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum with uh, really strong defense. Uh, I don't fully trust Zach Wilson, obviously. He's not that great. Um, but he's not completely inept uh, as he had played previously. And he has a couple great weapons to get the, the ball in their hands. They just need to make sure that he is doing quick three-step drops and getting the ball out of his hands. And uh, I think the Jets will be okay. It'll be interesting to see what they do this week. I definitely expect them to lose to the Chargers. At 16, we got Seattle dropping down uh, five spots from where we had last week. Uh, we did expect Baltimore to win. I thought Baltimore would be, you know, we said we'd lean Baltimore cover. Uh, you know, obviously didn't expect them to blow out Seattle, um, but they did, and you know, I guess part of that is just on Baltimore having a lot of ways to threaten teams. But uh, Seattle's kind of a hard team to figure out. Uh, they've looked like world beaters in some games and then other games finding ways to win. And then this game they just got beat down. At 15, we got the Cleveland Browns. I know we've got a couple of people that say I haven't been given enough respect. Uh, Watson looked serviceable. I still think he misses on some passes badly and I still do not trust their offense at all. Uh, it is nice that they have Kareem Hunt who's been pretty good handing the ball to and then of course their defense is really really good. At 14 is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again I mean if you look at their record this is a really good team especially when you look at who they beat who they played. Uh, just I can't get over the fact that I don't really trust their offense. Uh, again Kenny Pickett is similar to Zach Wilson and the fact that he's not going to have a lot of time and they need to have some smart play calling to get the ball out of his hands quickly and into their playmakers' hands. And, you know, at that point, I think Pittsburgh could be a playoff team. But I wouldn't be surprised if they fell back, you know, to 9-8 and eight or something at that point because... I, I really don't trust the offense at all, despite them having one of the league's best defenses and probably the best defensive player in T.J. Watt. At 13, my love obsession with the uh, Houston Texans continues. 
I got to watch a good bunch of that game. Despite losing their kicker and not being able to make field goals or, you know, have good kickoffs and going for every two-point conversion, C.J. Stroud still pulled it off, and uh, he looked amazing. So I like Houston at 13. Uh, I definitely like them better than any of the teams we have below them and maybe even a couple above, really, if we're thinking about how they've looked when I've watched them. At 12, we got the Saints. Um, Saints find a way to win. They got a good defense. Uh, they got Kamara. They got Carr. Um, and then, you know, the trick plays with Tyson Hill and picking up short yardage. I think they have a lot of ways to win. But I don't think that this is a team that's going to compete with the upper level of teams. At 11, go before the game with the Chargers. And I do expect the Chargers to win this week. Um, they've looked pretty good. Their offense is good. I think that they're a team that can compete with anybody. Um, they have some issues on defense, but they got a lot of weapons on offense, and they're pretty good on that end. So I like the Chargers at 11. At number 10, we got Buffalo. Uh, tough one here before the game. Uh, I do think Cincinnati is probably going to win, although Buffalo is a team that can beat anybody. Uh, they're a strange team to pick because they have tons of talent, and Josh Allen can do some amazing things. But he's also a turnover machine and makes some poor decisions at time. And I think that's something that's going to stop them from making any kind of real playoff run. And I think that's going to be a thing that costs them games in, against the better teams in the league. At number nine, I'm going to actually switch it up and I'm going to go Jacksonville. Now, I know they dropped uh, a few spots here without even playing. But I just got to be honest with myself. There's a lot of these teams I have ahead of Jacksonville that I just think have better rosters and I think have better teams. And they would be the teams I would pick straight up against Jacksonville. At number eight, we're going to go with the Detroit Lions, keeping them uh, in the same spot on the bye. They're a tough team that still has a few things to figure out. It's a young team. The offense can be stagnant. Sometimes uh, the defense has issues at all three levels, but can also make explosive plays, have a very strong offensive line that helps them run the ball or give Jared Goff time. And they're starting to get some good playmakers at all three levels with you know, obviously Aiden Hutchinson on the edge, but Ali McNeil making some plays inside, as well as uh, Anzalone just being a smart player overall. And then I really like uh, the new guy, Brian Branch, as well as uh, Kirby Joseph on the back end. At seven, we'll go with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the game against the Bills is going to tell a lot if Joe Burrow was really healthy and they fit their stride. Or if they've just had a couple of good games. And, you know, are they second tier or are they top tier? And I think that's going to be answered tonight or give us a, a better gauge of where the Bengals are. But I got them at seven for now, expecting them to win. But I wouldn't be surprised if Buffalo pulled it off because they're a tough team as well. At six, we got San Francisco. Um, San Francisco is a tough team. They're loaded all the way around. They have a top roster. They're, they're good all over the place. The only question mark is that quarterback. And you wonder how far someone can be, can take a team as a game manager when you start getting into the elite teams. At five is Dallas. Uh, they had a, a good showing against Philadelphia, but came up short in the end. They have clock management issues. They still can't run the ball as well as you would like. And they've been exposed in some of the games against the better teams. At four, we got the Dolphins, maybe too high. Uh, and at this point, they have lost against all the better teams that they've played. 
despite looking exceptional against some of the weaker teams. So this is this team could slide down from here. Uh, they got themselves in a 21 nothing hole, but they did seem to find their way out of it, uh, although they couldn't finish the job. It will be interesting because they still do have some key pieces coming back, however. All right, at three was a tough one. We went with Kansas City. I do, like I say every week, really like their roster up and down. Uh, they are deficient at maybe the offensive tackle spot, wide receiver position for sure. And, you know, like any teams could have a few upgrades on the defense. But overall, with studs like Chris Jones, lockdown cornerbacks, and then, of course, Patrick Mahomes just being the best player in the game. They're going to be a force to reckon with. And, you know, they were favored to win all of their games this year for a reason. At two was Baltimore. I had a hard time choosing between three or two. But, you know, if we're going off of what they've done and how they've won, you know, you really got to slot them at, in at two here. Uh, it's interesting to see how the offense is working. I still don't trust it as an elite offense, but... Lamar Jackson is showing to look pretty good with options like Flowers and Beckham that he hasn't really had before. And they really have a good balance with a really good defense, a quarterback that can hurt you multiple ways, a solid run game, and some wide receiving, and of course a top-tier tight end option that really makes threats for you all over the place. And, of course, at number one, we get the Philadelphia Eagles. They got so many ways to win. They got probably the best offensive line in the game, one of the best defensive lines in the game. They made some moves to try to shore up uh, some of the back-end players that they lost on defense. They can run the ball. Uh, Hertz has an amazing weapon in A.J. Brown that he can throw it up to when he gets in trouble. Plus, he can scramble with his legs to buy time or run to pick up first down. So, the Eagles really have a lot of ways to win games, even though they maybe haven't looked super dominant in any of the games so far this year. So, that's who I got for the power rankings this week. Let me know what I got right, what I got wrong. Like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.